Hello our most valued student. My name is Confident. Welcome to our revision session and today I'm looking at some trick uh, simplification. This is for grade 12 as they are preparing for their final exams and I just wanted to bring this as a revision session and it is also actually content that is based from grade 11 work. So if you're in grade 11, this is also suitable for you. Even if you're also doing your technical mathematics or you're doing your N3 and N4, this will also be relevant to you. Now let us look at this question. It's a quick one. Just wanted to bring it to you. I got it from one of the previous papers and it says you need to simplify so to a single term. And what we're given is that. Now, whenever I'm given the, re the, the part whereby I, use, I need to reduce, I have to then use the cast diagram because it is my go-to diagram whenever I'm dealing with some reduction rules. So what I'll do, let me quickly uh, put it down. This is my cast diagram. And remember, it goes all students take chemistry and then I've got zero degrees I've got 90 degrees I've got 180 degrees I've got 270 degrees and a complete cycle is 360 degrees as we said this is my quadrant 1 my quadrant 2 my quadrant 3 and my quadrant four this is what i encourage you uh, to do whenever you are given uh, or whenever you start working on the section of trigonometry in your paper just catch this in that particular paper so that you can be able to use it you know you don't have to actually try to cram or to guess these things so let's go for the reduction rules this is 90 minus x in this quadrant it is 90 plus x or plus theta and 180 minus theta minus x and then it is 180 plus x and then it is 360 minus x now there is a i think about five different uh, videos that i did that talk about the cast diagram and in full explaining what you need to do for you to be able to understand the cast diagram i will encourage you to grab hold of those videos they are very very important for you to be able to see how simple such a simplification is this question was worth six marks you cannot afford to lose those six marks especially if after mastering the cast diagram you will find that it is the most simplest question to solve so grab all of those videos make sure that you go through them and you will see how simple that now let us use that first things first let's start with sine 540 minus x let's see what will this simplify to now when we are talking about 540 you can see that the complete cycle is 360 so we have gone beyond the complete cycle so this then means we can write it as sine 360 plus you can use a calculator to find what's uh, 540 minus 360 it gives me 180 so plus 180 minus x and then this symbol becomes sine because it's a complete cycle you just write that other part which is 180 degrees minus x now when you simplify sine 180 degrees minus x you ask yourself which quadrant is it you can see that it is in the third i mean in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant sine is the one that is positive so this then become using the reduction rule it simplifies to sine x so that is the first part so you can uh, i'll write that on top to say sine that will become simple sine x but you need to be showing this working just for my space i'm going to just um simplify it like that and keep erasing so you saw that this becomes sine x now what about sine minus x so if i have got sine negative x now with the negative x remember the rotation or the way you are moving you are moving anti-clockwise in the cast diagram so this is the direction that you are moving so remember that it is anti-clockwise so if you then um 
that if you are now using the negative angle it means you are changing the direction you are now starting to move clockwise and whenever you're moving clockwise the first quadrant to land in is the fourth quadrant and in the fourth quadrant only cause is positive the rest are negative so what is sine negative x it becomes minus sine x why because you are now in the fourth quadrant just pretend when you use a negative sign you are going to be landing on the fourth quadrant and in the fourth quadrant ask yourself what is uh what is positive which is cos the other two sine and 10 are negative hence sine minus x is equal to negative sine x so that's what we're going to have here as negative sine x we move on again to cos 180 minus x which is that now it will become um in this case we ask ourselves which quadrant is cos 180 minus x again it is in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant only sign you can see is positive meaning cos is negative in that quadrant because cos is negative this will simplify to negative uh, cos x for that so that is how you are going to simplify that which becomes negative uh, cos x and then lastly we have um, sine 90 plus x now if you're going to be simplifying sine 90 plus x now whenever you're dealing with 90 you must know that you're dealing with co functions so sine becomes a co function of course the moment you're dealing with 90 always remember it's co functions now 90 plus x is in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant sign is positive remember it is the sign that you're focusing on because they are saying sign so sign is positive therefore it becomes positive cos x remember the cos function sign becomes cos but the sign is the that of sign so it becomes cos x and that's what we're going to have in here as cos x so this is what it simplified to and if we are then going to find the final answer i'm going to erase now this just to give the final answer to that it will be equal to um let me just use that it will be equal to now where there was sign that i'm going to have now my sine x and then times now the other one is bracket negative sine x then i've got minus that minus and i've got also the negative cos x and then i've got times i've got uh cos x like that then i continue to simplify now sine x times minus sine x is negative sine squared x you can say that one it's sine squared x and then the negative and the negative there will neutralize each other to get, give me a positive cos x times cos x which is cos squared x so that's what i'm left with now which is minus sine squared x plus cos squared x at this point it's very very important for you to understand um, the identities if you look carefully if i rewrite this starting with cos squared it will become cos squared x then it's minus uh, sine squared x now if you go to your formulas you will see that you have that identity and that identity is actually cos if you look at your uh, formulas under cos 2 alpha and the first one you can see that cos 2 alpha simplifies to cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha so that's what i'm having here which is cos squared x minus sine squared x and then this simplifies to cos 2x so that is what it simplifies to now be careful be careful in this stage not to be tricked because some students are tempted to say this is equal to negative one why because they are using the identity 
cos squared x plus uh, sine squared x is equal to 1. So they are tempted to use this identity, but see the difference? This is minus sine squared x. Now the identity, it has to be positive cos squared x plus positive sine squared x to give you a 1. So these two are totally different in that case. Secondly, let's say you want to test your answer. Let's go for testing. If you want to test your answer, choose any value of x. For example, let x be equal to 50 degrees. So what you do is you go to the original and wherever there is uh, x, you put 50 degrees. So it is going to be uh, sine 540 minus 50 and then times sine. So it was minus x. So it is negative 50. And then we have got minus cos which is uh, 180 minus 50 and then times sine uh, 90 plus 50. So this is what I'm having. So I'm going to note the answer here. The answer is 0, 0,3597. Uh, so I'm getting here 0, 0,3597. So when x does 0, 0,3597. So now I'm going to test again on the simplified version where there is uh, x on cos 2x. I'm going to use my value that I got for x as 50. So it's cos bracket 2x, which is 2 times 50. And then I say the answer there. It is um, 2 times x is minus 0, 0,17. I don't know where. Let me just check because it's supposed actually to give me a similar answer. Let's go to the top again and redo what I did. Uh, now being more careful with the uh, numbers. It's 540 minus 50. Remember? And then after that it's times sine minus 50 just being careful now how i enter it because it's supposed to give me the same thing if i simplify it properly minus cos 180 minus 50 and then times sine 90 and then it's plus 50. so let me do that and see the answer i'm getting i'm getting minus 0, 0,1736 so I think that's why I made an error. So it's minus 0, 0,174. So here instead of that, it's negative 0, comma. Uh, if I use a different one, it's negative 0, 0,174. Now if I use, I think that's the same answer that I got on cos 2x. So if I use cos 2 times 50, and then I get that is negative 0, 0,174. So you can see that this is matching from the beginning, the question given to the answer. If I'm getting the same answer for any value of x, it means my simplification at that stage is correct. Therefore, I'm more confident that the answer for cos 2x is the simplified version of that particular uh, expression. Now, guys, such questions such uh, demonstrations, such workings, I always provide them in the 24-minute uh, uh, lesson on my YouTube channel. I will encourage you to subscribe to that channel. Switch on that notification bell so that you can be notified every time there is a new video. There will be more and more and the sessions will get intense and intense as you guys approach your final exams. I hope this will benefit you so that you can get that mark that you are earmarking for. I wish you all the best as you prepare for your final exams. Cheers. See you, next. See, you, see you again next time. Thank you.